So you get to work on multiple types of kits, multiple types of equipment. Yeah, like I say, no day is ever the same. You could do install, you could do service. You get to go up and down the country, you get to visit places you've never seen before, interact with new people, um, as well as problem solving. I like the problem solving aspect of the job, so constantly keeps your brain ticking. Um, yeah, you can, you can attend breakdowns and you can, you can spend hours trying to solve a problem. Once you've solved that problem, um, there's no greater self-satisfaction than fixing something and, and getting somebody's heating or cooling working again. In order to definitely be a service engineer, which is what I am at the moment, you've got to be well, you've got to be able to interact with people well. So, like I say, I visit different places every day. They might be offices, colleges, schools, wherever it might be. Um, and I'm constantly interacting with different people. So you've got to, you've got to sort of um, come across as, you know, knowledgeable, respectful. Um, so yeah, definitely personal skills are definitely um, something that you need as well as the, um, as well as your skills, your manual skills. I do take pride in what I do. I think, I think you've got to take pride in what you do. That, that, that's what helps you improve and, and that's what makes you better over the years. You, you want to aspire to be the best that you can because um, that's going to that's going to help you stand out from the rest and i think you're going to you're going to progress a lot further if you, if you take pride in what you do so if you wanted to get into the trade this is the career you want to choose um, the normal route as with many other trades is try and find yourself an apprenticeship so try and find a company that will need to take you on as an apprentice and then they will give you a day release to college this might be three or four years um, but that's probably the best route to get in while you're young. I know as you get older, it's not always that easy. So, you know, if you're a late learner, um, again, just try and get your foot in the door with a company and you could possibly do your college on a night time, um, you know, if you've got a busy schedule. But yeah, definitely try and go through the apprenticeship route first if you can, um, and then just knuckle down and try your hardest. I think if you just show willing um, and work hard, it'll get noticed. As long as you're willing to learn and you're paying an interest, I think even the person that's teaching you is going to, is going to take notes and you're going to go far. So I got into the trade about 18, 19 years ago. Um, now obviously back then there was no social media, there was no Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, there wasn't any of that. And it was slightly harder to get information from you know, the internet as such. Um, you sort of knew what you knew and you knew what you knew through whoever was teaching you and through what you learned at college. Nowadays, obviously, we've got the likes of all these social media channels. There's a lot of free advice going around. There's a lot of good advice as well, which is, that, that's one of the reasons why I like social media. It's one of the reasons that drew me in because I didn't have that when I was training. So I feel it's nice to, if I can give back some, some tips and help some people along the way, then I don't think there's uh, anything bad with that at all. Um, have recently started a YouTube channel as well as my Instagram, TikTok, and um, there's a lot of guys from other parts of the world, sort of the US, Canada, that show a lot of HVAC related stuff, but there's not really much happening in the UK. So that was my reasoning for, for getting into social media. I just wanted to show the sort of stuff that we work on. Uh, and again, not try and give something back. Try and, if I can help at least one person, whether that's an apprentice, a trainee, or perhaps somebody who's just stuck and um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't know everything. I'm still learning, um, even now, every day. You know, you, you always learn something new. Um, so, yeah, I think social media, is, for me, is definitely a good thing. Air conditioning, um, if we look at sort of how it affects people in the, in the day to day living, um, air conditioning is, can be used in a massive variety of stuff. Um, all the way from sort of refrigeration, same sort of technology, obviously refrigeration, we all uh, have to refrigerate food and, and other things like that. Um, air conditioning, again, we can have sort of process cooling um, that can help cool down machinery or other critical things. Um, and then we can go to the other end of the spectrum, which is basically what we'd call comfort cooling. Um, let's just say you're sitting at work in an office. Now, when you're in that office, you're probably more productive if you're sitting in a comfortable environment. So the air conditioning will, um, that's gonna provide you a comfortable environment to be in, uh, whether it be heating or cooling. So um, I think, you know, air conditioning serves a big purpose uh, in the world today. And um, it can, it can, it's around in many different aspects. Cool, heat pumps, you wanna talk about? Yeah, it can do, yeah. 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 yeah, no, it can do, man. 
I think. So if we talk about heat pumps, probably quite relevant at the moment and it's a funny, it can be a bit of a funny crossover between an air conditioning engineer and a heating or a plumbing engineer. Obviously, a heat pump, as we know it, is essentially an air conditioning unit, um, the sort of stuff that I work on day to day. Obviously, a plumbing and heating engineer might not have come across that technology or might not have seen that technology before, but um, essentially what's inside that box outside is uh, the same techn technology as what's in an air conditioning unit and whatever's inside is essentially the same technology that uh, a plumbing or a heating engineer would use so it's definitely something that's obviously been pushed um, and I definitely think it's important for plumbing and heating engineers as well to, to learn about heat pumps um, you know and there's a lot of um, opportunity for sort of collaborations between the two trades so um, yeah something to watch out for in the future.